Hey everybody, this is Dr. Jeremy Sharp. Welcome to the Testing Psychologist Podcast, episode number 15. Hey y'all, this is Dr. Jeremy Sharp again. Welcome back to another episode of the Testing Psychologist Podcast. I'm sitting here looking out my window on a beautiful, beautiful spring day here in Fort Collins. Um, We had a little run of cold weather last week, but we are definitely getting into the spring slash summertime, which is great news for me. I think I mentioned that I've grown up in the south, uh, and I'm definitely used to more heat and humidity, so that kind of thing just feels like home. But we are getting there here in Fort Collins, so I'm super excited about that. So today is a little bit of a different episode. Um... To be honest, this episode, I I really consider just not even publishing anything this week. Um, But I decided to just go for it and put something together real quick. Um, So I was out of town, let's see, last Thursday and Friday and all through the weekend. So typically the weekend or Thursdays and Fridays is when I work on my podcast. And so I got back to town on Monday and... Um, you know, I was feeling all this pressure to uh, get the podcast out. And uh, honestly, some other things came up here in the practice where I'm our clinical director and uh, I've been working on handling some of that and just making sure that things are running smoothly here. So what happened was I got into this place of, you know, that old kind of perfectionistic stuff uh, started to kick up and And I just said, oh, you know, rather than release an unfinished episode or a a short episode, I think I'll just skip it this week and um, wait and really, you know, hone the episode for next week and release it back on Monday again. But then I got to thinking, okay, this is probably good practice. Um, Good practice that, you know, some exposure to um, not give in to that perfectionism and need to, like, do everything exactly right every single time. And... I also had some really cool experiences while I was out of town, and that got me thinking about some things that I think would are relevant to talk about here on the podcast. So I've decided here for today, I'm just winging it. I don't have any notes typed up or guidelines or anything like that. I just wanted to share some thoughts from my weekend trip and uh, some things that have been going on here in the practice. So one big thing that um, really came out of my weekend trip. And there are really, I think, two things I'm going to kind of touch on today. Um, one was the value of actually taking some time to go out of town and take a little bit of time away from the practice, um, slow down a little bit, and be very deliberate with reflection. Um, I, th- I do not do this very often, to be honest. And this was a little bit of work for me. Um, it's much easier for me to stay here and work on the practice and work on my reports and just constantly be like doing, doing, doing. Um, and there are any number of distractions here, uh, from day to day and week to week. So this was a big deal. I took some time off, um, really to go out and spend some time with good friends. Um, but also got to, um, hang out with Connor McClanahan from Coupla Media. Uh, If you haven't looked those guys up, you should. They're great. They do video marketing for therapists. So I got to have a a really cool meeting with him and we talked about video marketing for therapists and um, our practices and that kind of thing. But generally, this trip was really just to give me some time to get away. And what it ended up turning into, this wasn't deliberate necessarily, but when I found myself with some free time, and really this was just um, you know, a couple hours on the plane ride out, um, and then maybe, I don't know, two, three, four hours uh, each day on Thursday and Friday. Um, that's all that it took for me to just to step away. Um, I could have worked on reports and business stuff, but I didn't. Um, and I was able to let go of some of that anxiety. And just having little small windows like that where Um, I went on some walks. Um, I sat out in the sun. I was in Los Angeles, so uh, it was nice and sunny and easy to spend some time outside. And I just spent some time thinking about uh, the business and um, our assessment process and our 
um, staff and um, needs in the community. And um, it was really, really nice to just take a little bit of time away. And I was struck by how little time it took to really gain some clarity around some of these fairly um, big issues that have been going on here in the practice, kind of big picture stuff that I just I sort of lose track of and don't work on as much as I should because I'm wrapped up in the day-to-day and the clinical work. So that's one piece is I just uh, think wanted to speak briefly to the value of um, if you're not doing that, I mean, it's not like you have to take a trip and get out of town necessarily, but um, even taking uh, you know, a half day where you're out of the office every other week, or um, if you can do a couple day trip, that can be really helpful for your business development and for your own mental health too. I came back so refreshed and recharged and excited to get back in and really uh, work. So that was super helpful. Um, if you're looking to do that in a really structured way, something that I have signed up for for the summer is um, Joe Sanok's Slow Down School, which is a, I guess you call it a conference, but it's a, I almost think of it as like a retreat opportunity where it's a week long um, event where there's some really deliberate slowing down and days of doing nothing, but then um, going to be paired with some pretty structured um, coaching uh, for building your practice, building your business, um, things like that. So um, I'm going to be there. It'd be great to see uh, some listeners there too, if that thing, that kind of thing sounds appealing to you. So just a brief plug, like I said, for kind of getting away, slowing down, reflecting on your processes. Um, that was super helpful for me. Then the second component that I really wanted to speak to today, again, just briefly, is uh, just uh, uh, some thoughts on not having to do things perfectly. So I mentioned that at the beginning that um, this podcast, I almost didn't record it um, just by virtue of not having a, a really well thought out, put together podcast. But then I thought, okay, there's a little something to say here. Let me just go for it. And I think that this is a good... Um, metaphor maybe to keep in mind or idea to keep in mind just for our practices. Um, I, I see this coming up a lot day to day, um, particularly for me, you know, I have trouble with um, getting reports absolutely perfect. I can just like comb over and over and over my reports and um, writing the interpretation exactly right and including every bit of, bit of information that I think I need to and really speaking to um, what the parents or the client needs to hear in this assessment. And I think that you know, 90% of that is probably really, really good and part of what sets us apart um, with our evaluations. And that last 10% is maybe going above and beyond what actually needs to get done and, in fact, just wastes time that I don't need to spend on reports. And so, like I said, this is a little bit of practice uh, for me just in, you know, in another context to um, let go of the perfectionism a little bit. Um, so I see that coming up in reports. Um, I see that with um, tools that I'm researching for our business or ways of doing things. Like I can often get lost in the research and lost in finding exactly the right way to do things. And um, that ends up just taking more time. And then, you know, of course, it's time that I'm not necessarily getting paid for. And often the the outcome does not justify the time spent on it. So that maybe incremental increase in um uh, accuracy or effectiveness or whatever the metric might be um, usually doesn't doesn't you know justify the time. So just a couple of thoughts on that. I'm sure that a lot of you are familiar with that. Uh, you know the perfectionism and um, wanting to do things right, and I think to some degree that's really valuable. And it's always worth coming back to and revisiting, and maybe even practicing um, not doing things absolutely perfectly uh, once or twice and see how that goes. So yeah, just thinking back, um, I'm sure uh, this podcast is not one of the best ones necessarily, but uh, hopefully worthwhile just to um, get a few thoughts out there about slowing down and um, maybe not being quite so hard on yourself to, you know, to do things absolutely right every single time. So I appreciate it, as always. Um, it is really cool to see our listening community continue to grow and to see the Facebook community continue to grow. Um, if you have not joined the Facebook community, 
you can definitely check us out. Um, you can search for the testing psychologist community on uh, Facebook at that search bar at the top. You can also go to the website, which is the testing psychologist.com. And there you can find articles and a link to the Facebook group and, information about uh, building your testing services via articles and past podcast episodes and things like that. So thanks to all of you who continue to listen and pass along the podcast to your friends. Uh, it's really, really amazing to see things continue to grow and um, spread the word about testing and the business side of things. So stay tuned. Um, I have some really, really great interviews coming up over the next few weeks. Um, I've got Kelly Higdon and Allison Perrier, who are both, um, I would say, superstars in the mental health consulting world. And um, we have some really good conversations about um, building your ideal practice, about money mindset, and how to talk about charging big fees for testing, um, wrapping your mind around that, how to create the practice that you really want. Um, and then I also am speaking with a couple of psychologists with some really um, interesting specialty areas within testing. So um, talking with uh, Dr. Erica Martinez about how to apply neuropsych training to a more of a therapeutic assessment model and um, helping millennials and young adults be successful. And then I also hope to be talking soon with Dr. Amy Yermish, who specializes in assessment with gifted and twice exceptional kids. And she has a really cool practice going on over on the East coast. So keep your eyes out for future episodes. I think we've got some cool stuff coming up in the meantime, feel free to pass this along and uh, share on your own Facebook group or with friends or on your blog or wherever you might um, pass along information to, to other folks. So thanks as always. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Take care.